Hello guys and welcome back for this new tutorial on Hollywood Illusion. Today we are going to talk about how to composite a Marvel shot and make it look great. For that we are going to work on this shot based on Ant-Man. I remember watching Ant-Man for the first time back in 2015 and thinking wow the visual effects are great. The way they distort the image to make Ant-Man look tiny while everything else looks huge was mind blowing. This was truly amazing so let's have fun and recreate this kind of visual effects. I've created this shot using 3D Studio Max and After Effects and here is my raw 3D render. As you can see it doesn't look great. The whole purpose of compositing is to add all the elements necessary to go from this 3D render to this final shot. In the movie Ant-Man there are two things that really pop up when trying to replicate macro shots. The first one is the use of depth of field to make the shot more cinematic and also to increase the differences between the object's scale in the scene. And the second one is the use of chromatic aberration, which is a color distortion that often appears in macro shots. So here we've got Ant-Man running over a trunk tree. First, we need a background. To do that, I will use an HDRR image. HDRI means High Dynamic Range Image. It's a panoramic photo which covers all the angles from a single point and also contains data about the brightness of each pixel. I will use this HDRI that I downloaded from polyheaven.com. Now, one thing very very important when it comes to compositing, especially for movies, always use 32 bits per channel. I will demonstrate why it is important with this example. Imagine that you want to lower the exposure of your image. If you are compositing with 8 bits per channel, the image will look completely washed out because the brightness of the pixels are not preserved. However, if you switch to 32 bits per channel, we are basically preserving these details and the picture will look more realistic. Now, I have a 3D camera right here that I have imported from 3D Studio Max. If you want me to do a tutorial on how to import 3D data from 3D Studio Max into After Effects, just tell me in the comments. When you have a panoramic picture, you want After Effects to have a point of view that matches the camera's position and orientation. To do that, simply apply the CC environment effect to the layer. Ok, that's better, but we need to make the shot look more cinematic. To do that, I will pre-compose the layer, add a camera lens blur on it to simulate depth of field, and add some vibrance to enhance the colors. In the movie Ant-Man, there are a lot of macro shots which are extreme close-up photographs. This means that the depth of field is even more accentuated than regular shots. In this example, we are focusing on the main character, so everything else should be blurry. So we need to apply a camera lens blur only on this tree trunk here. To isolate the tree trunk, I will use my object ID pass. Remember that when compositing, it is important to render passes from your 3D software, because they offer a way to control any aspect of your scene. You can for example render a reflection pass, which isolates all the reflections of your scene, a specular pass, which isolates the specular highlights from your objects, and in this case, I have also rendered an object ID pass using my 3D software, which displays one color for each object of the scene. I will isolate my trunk tree using a linear color key, and pick the correct color. You can see that the area where is located our trunk tree is now transparent. Now, I will create an adjustment layer, Add some blur on it and select the alpha matte inverted mode. To make it more smoother on the edges, simply apply a fast blur on the object ID pass. However, you can see that the blur stops and it looks weird, so to counter this problem, I will use a min max effect. This will allow me to extend the alpha area and make it look great. To improve the look of our shot, 
I've added a light wrap to make the subject blend with the background. It's basically a black and white map in which the edges of your subject have a subtle gradient towards the center. You can find all the details on how to make this light wrap map in my previous tutorial about how to composite a Spider-Man shot. So I just duplicated my background and selected the Luma Matte mode. This means that our background will only appear on the brightest area of our image, here on the edges of our subject. Ok, so let's now talk about the final touch. Chromatic aberration is a color distortion that creates an outline of unwanted color along the edges of objects. This is very important to increase the realism of your shot, but it can also destroy your composition if you overdo it. There are multiple types of chromatic aberration, but here we are going to talk about two methods, which combined can look really good. First, I will create a new composition. Apply the set channels effect and disable the red and green channels. Then duplicate the composition and only enable the red and green channels. Finally, just set the blending mode of the top layer to add and move it one pixel on the X and Y axis. If I zoom in, you can now see the chromatic aberration appear on the edges of the objects. Now, the second method is to add lens distortion on our image, coupled with chromatic aberration. To do that, I will use a picture of dirt on the lens and add it to a new composition. Then, I will add the set channels effect and duplicate it three times. Don't forget to set the blending mode to add. In the bottom layer, I will only enable the red channel. In the second one, the green channel and increase the scale. And in the third layer, I will only enable the blue channel and increase the scale even more. You can now see the chromatic aberration appearing on the edges of our image. And that's what we want, but to make it more subtle, I will add an adjustment layer and apply a radial blur effect. So now that we've got our lens distortion ready, I will add it to our main composition, add a mask to make it only appear on the edges of our shot, and reduce the opacity. I did the exact same thing with another picture of dirt on the lens, and that's it! Finally, add some levels correction Vineting and some grain and now we've got our final shot! If you want to save time, you can download the full 3 animated scene ready to use as well as the After Effects project directly from HollywoodIllusion.com Hope you liked this tutorial guys, and I see you soon for another exciting project!